This question is from 2012, question two. It gave you a bank's balance sheet listing the assets and the liabilities. For liabilities, we have $100,000 of demand deposits like checking accounts that customers have put into the bank. It's a liability because the bank has to pay those people back. Now with that $100,000, the bank holds $10,000 in reserves. It has 5,000 excess reserves that it hasn't loaned out. And it also loaned out $85,000. Now notice, the total assets equals the total liabilities. And that's why it's called a bank balance sheet. Question A starts off by asking you a simple question. What is the reserve requirement that's set by the government? If this bank has $100,000 of deposits and it's holding $10,000 in required reserves, the reserve requirement must be 10%. That's the money they cannot loan out. For part B, it tells you one of these customers shows up and withdraws $5,000. So let's go ahead and do that to find out what happens. There's a decrease of $5,000. Now where's the bank gonna get that money to pay that guy? It's gonna come out of the reserves. Now remember, reserves are held just for that purpose, just in case someone shows up and wants the money back. But we're not done here. Now that the demand deposits are only $95,000, not $100,000, the bank doesn't need to hold $10,000 in reserves anymore. So the amount of required reserves for the bank is actually only $9,500. The other $500 is excess reserves that the bank can now loan out. So now everything's balanced. There's $95,000 of liabilities and there's $95,000 of assets. Now back to the question. BI asks what happens to the reserves of the bank because of that $5,000 withdrawal? Well, before the reserves were $15,000. Remember, it was $10,000 for required reserves and another $5,000 of excess reserves. But now it's only $10,000. So the reserves just decreased by $5,000. Which makes sense. If someone takes out $5,000, your reserves are going to decrease by $5,000. Now, B2 is kind of tricky. It says, what's the initial effect when there's a decrease of $5,000 on the total money supply? Well, the initial effect, there is none. Now, you might want to say there is an effect, right? There's a decrease of $5,000 in the money supply when that person took out their money. But no. Remember, money in demand deposits and money in cash is still part of the money supply. Now, this is an explain question, so you have to explain why the answer is there's no effect. I put only the classification change because the $5,000 cash is still part of the money supply. The last question in B said, what is the new excess reserves for this bank after the draw of $5,000? The answer we already know is $500. Now remember the reason why is after the money was taken out, the bank doesn't need to hold $10,000 in reserves anymore. All they have to hold is 10%, $9,500 of reserves. So the other $500 is excess reserves. Only one part left, part C. This question said that another customer comes to the bank and wants to withdraw more money than this bank has in excess reserves. For example, let's say another $5,000. Let's show the numbers for that really quick. So now this bank has $90,000 of demand deposits. It's got its $85,000 of loans, no excess reserves, and a required reserve of only $5,000. But don't forget, this bank needs 10% of required reserves, and so they're not making the reserve requirement. So where is this bank going to get the money to cover its reserve requirement if it's not going to call back the loans? Well, commercial banks can go to two separate places. They can go to the central bank, or they can go to other commercial banks. And that's the answer, the central bank or other banks. You didn't need this for the question, but I want to remind you, the interest rate the central bank will charge is called the discount rate, and the rate the other banks will charge is called the federal funds rate. Okay, this question's out of five points. One, two, three, four, and five. Add them all up, see how you did. Until next time.